Francisco Perez. Welcome to another educational lesson. Today we're going to be reading from the Septuagint. So this is uh, Joshua. It's called Ihyoine. Something like that. In uh, Greek. Coptic. And it came to pass after the death of Moses that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nau, the minister of Moses, saying to Moses, my servant is dead. Now then arise, go over Jordan, thou and all this people into the land which I give them. Every spot on which you shall tread, I will give it to you. I will give it you, as I said to Moses. The wilderness and Antilopanus, as far as the great river Euphrates, and as far as the extremity of the sea, your coast shall be from the setting of the sun. <clears throat> One and five. Not a man shall stand up against you all the days of thy life. And as I was with Moses, so will I also be with thee. And I will not fail thee or neglect thee. Verse six. Be strong and quiet and quiet thyself like a man. For thou shalt divide the land to this people. Okay. If I have a hard time reading this because the Septuagint I have is not the easiest to read. Okay. Which I swear to give to your fathers. So this land I swore to your fathers. He's talking about America. When he's saying crossing over the Jordan. He's talking about the Jordan River in Utah region, in the west coast of America. So they had just came over the land bridge after leaving um, Russia area, Moscow, Moses, land bridge, came out Alaska, dealt with the Canadian Indians, bought some caves from them. And they came down to Utah area, Zion National Park, Canaan Wilderness. You can look all those up. Be strong, therefore, and quiet thyself like a man, to observe and do as Moses my servant commanded thee. And thou shalt not turn, and therefrom to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest be wise in whatsoever thou mayest do. And the book of this law should not depart out of thy mouth. And thou shalt meditate in it day and night, that thou mayest know how to do all the things that are written in it. You hear this? Key. Then shalt thou prosper and make thy ways prosperous. And then shalt thou be wise. Lo, I have commanded thee, be strong and courageous. This is verse 9. <clears throat> be not cowardly, nor fearful. For the Lord thy God is with thee, high high, in all the places whither thou goest. And Joshua commanded the scribes of the people, saying, Go into the midst of the camp. Of the people and command the people saying prepare provisions for yet three days and ye shall go over this Jordan entering into take possession of the land which Lord God of your fathers higher higher gives to you and to Reuben verse 12 and to Reuben and to Gad and to half the tribe of Manasseh Joshua said, verse 13, Remember the words which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying,
the Lord your God has caused you to rest and has given you this land. Verse 14. Let your wives and your children and your cattle dwell in the land which he has given you. And ye shall go over well on before your brethren, every one of you who is strong. And ye shall fight on their side until the Lord high higher shall have given your brethren rest as also to you and they also shall have inherited the land which the Lord high higher gives them then ye shall depart each one to his inheritance which Moses gave you beyond Jordan eastward and they answered Joshua and said we will do all things which thou commandest and we will go to every place whither thou shalt send us whensoever we hearken to Moses we will hearken to thee only let the Lord our God be with thee as he was with Moses and whoever shall disobey thee and whoever shall not hearken to thy words as thou shalt command him let him die but be thou strong and courageous. And Joshua the son of Nau set out of Satan two young men to spy the land, saying, Go up and view the land in Jericho. And the two young men went and entered into Jericho. And they entered into the house of a harlot, whose name was Raab, and lodged there. And it was reported to the king of Jericho, saying, Men of the sons of Israel have come in hither to spy the land. And the king of Jericho sent and spoke to Raab, saying, Bring out the men that entered into thine house this night, for they are come to spy out the land. And the woman took the two men and hid them. And she spoke to the messengers, saying, The men came in to me. But when the gate was shut in the evening, the men went out. I know not whither they are going. Follow after them if ye may overtake them but she had brought them up upon the house and hid them in the flax stalks that were spread by her on the house and the men followed after them in the way of Jordan to the fords and the gate was shut and it came to pass when the men who pursued after them were gone forth And before the spies had laid down to sleep, that she came up to them on top of the house. So this is uh, chapter 2. Oh, I lost my place. So this is uh, verse, verse 9, chapter 2. And she said to them, I know that the Lord has given you the land, for the fear of you has fallen upon us. For we have heard that the Lord high higher dried up the Red Sea before you when you came out of the land of Egypt all that he did to the two kings of the Amorites who were beyond Jordan to Sion and Og whom he utterly destroyed so Og, Og um, was a king that we destroyed and in a uh, green river in Utah there's ghost cities and one of them is called uh, Og was something similar so just giving um just echoing the historic the historical evidence and the history of that area this is where the battle happened against the king of so to Sion and of whom he utterly destroyed and when we heard it we were amazed in our heart and there was no longer any spirit in any of the us because of you for higher, higher, your God is God in heaven above and on the earth beneath. And now swear to me by the 
by the Lord higher higher. This is uh, verse 12, chapter 2. Deal mercifully with you. So do you ye also deal mercifully with the house of my father and save alive the house of my father, my mother, and my brethren, and my, all my house, and all that they have, and ye shall rescue my soul from death. Verse 14. And the man, men said to her, Our life for yours, even to death. And she said, And the Lord shall have delivered the city to me. To you, ye shall deal mercifully and truly with me. So, meaning, when you conquer the city, do not kill me. Man. It was like, can't deal. And she let them down by the window, and she said to them, Depart into the hill country, lest the pursuers meet you, and ye shall be hidden there three days until your pursuers return from after you, and afterwards you should depart on your way. And the man said to her, We are clear of this thy oath. So he said, Deal. Behold, we shall enter into a part of the city that thou shalt set a sign. Thou shalt bind this scarlet cord in the window. So she said, he said, Tie this, tie this up on your window and they will know not to attack them. By which thou hast let us down and thou shalt bring into thyself in thy house, thy father and thy mother and thy brethren, and all the family of thy father. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall go outside the door of thy house, his guilt shall be upon him, and we shall be quit. We shall be quite, quite of this time oath. And we will be responsible for all that shall be found with thee in thy house. So. He's saying that if you go outside, then all bets off. If you stay in this house, then we got to deal. But if anyone shall injure us or betray these our matters, we shall be quit of this oath. So saying if any of them try to kill us or betray us, then you guys all dying. It's all dead. And she said to them, let it be according to your word. And she sent them out, and they departed, and they came to the hill country. Chapter... Verse 22, chapter 2. And they, and they came to the hill country and made there three days. And the pursuers searched all the roads and found them not. And the two young men returned and came down out of the mountain. And they went over to Joshua, the son of Maul, and told him all the things that had happened to them. Verse 24. And they said to Joshua, The Lord has delivered all the land into our power, and all the inhabitants of that land tremble because of us. And Joshua rose up early in the morning and departed from Satan. And they came as far as Jordan and lodged there before they crossed over. So this is chap chapter 3, verse 2. And it came to pass after three days that the scribes went to the camp. And they charged the people, saying, When ye shall see the ark of the covenant of Hiahiah, our God, and our priests and the Levites bearing it, you shall you shall depart from your places and you shall go after it. But let there be a distance between you and it. You shall stand as much as two thousand cubits from it. Do not drive nigh to it, that ye may know the way which ye are to go, for ye have not gone the way before. And verse five, and Joshua said to the people. Sanctify yourself against tomorrow, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. And Joshua said to the priest, Take up the ark of the covenant of the Lord and go up before the people. And the priest took up the ark of the covenant of the Lord and went, and went before the people. And the Lord said to Joshua, 
this day do I begin to exalt thee before all the, the children of Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, so will I also be with you. Chapter 3, verse 8. And now charge the priests that bear the Ark of the Covenant, saying, As soon as you shall enter on a part of the water of Jordan, and you shall stand in Jordan. Verse 9, chapter 3. And Joshua said to the children of Israel, Come hither, and hark unto the word, Hi, hi. Hereby ye shall know that the living God is among you, and will utterly destroy from before our face the Canaanite, and the Chittite, and Perizzite, and the Evite, and the Amorite, and the Girgashite, and the Jebusite. Behold, the ark of the covenant of the Lord higher, higher of all the earth passes over Jordan. Jordan River, Utah. Choose for yourself twelve men of the sons of Israel, each one of each tribe, and it shall come to pass when the feet of the priests that bear the ark of the covenant of higher, higher of the whole earth rest in the waters of Jordan. The water of Jordan below shall fail, and the water coming down from above shall stop. And the people revolt. <laughs> this is dope. Lord, uh, the water, the water of the Jordan, the water of the Jordan below shall fail, and the water coming down from the above shall stop. So you can stop the water from flowing and dry up the bottom. And the people were moved from their tents to cross over Jordan. And the priests bore the ark of the covenant of the Lord higher, higher before the people. And when the priests that bore the ark of the covenant of the Lord enter upon Jordan, and the feet of the priests that bore the ark of the covenant of the Lord were dipped in part of the water of Jordan, now Jordan overflowed all its banks about the time of wheat harvest. Then the waters that came down from above stopped. There stood one solid heap, very far off as far as the region of Caritharium. And the lowest part came down to the Sea of Araba. The sea south till it completely failed, and the people stood opposite Jericho. And the priest that bore the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood on dry land in the midst of Jordan. And all the children of Israel went through on dry land until all the people had completely gone over Jordan. When the, and when the people had completely passed over Jordan, Hiahiah spoke to Joshua, saying, Take men from the people each of one of each tribe and charge them, and you shall take out the midst of Jordan, twelve fit stones, and having carried them across together with yourselves, place them in your camp, where you shall encamp for the night. And Joshua, having called twelve men of distinction among the children of Israel, one of each tribe, said to them, Advance before me in the presence of the, of the, of the Lord, high, high, in the midst of Jordan. And each having taken up a stone from thence, let him carry it on his shoulders, according to the number of the twelve tribes of Israel, that these may be to you continually for an appointed sign, that when thy sons ask thee in future, saying, What are these stones to us? And thou mayest explain to thy sons, saying, The river Jordan was dried, I bet you I could find these stones right now on the internet in that region. Up from before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of the whole earth, when it passed it. And these stones shall be for a memorial for you and the children of Israel forever. The Afro-Asiatics and the children of Israel did so. 
as the Lord commanded Joshua. And they took up twelve stones of the midst of the Jordan, as the Lord commanded Joshua, and the children of Israel completely passed over, and carried these stones with them into the camp, and laid them down there. Chapter 4, verse 9. And the Lord... And Joshua set the, also other twelve stones in Jordan itself, in the place that was under the feet of the priests that bore the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. And there they are to this day. The priests that bore the Ark of the Covenant stood in Jordan until Joshua had finished all that the Lord commanded him to report to the people. And the people hasted and passed over. And it came to pass, when all the people had passed over, that the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord passed over, and the stones before them. Chapter 4, verse 12. And the sons of Reuben, and the sons of Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, <coughs> passed over on before the children of Israel, as Moses commanded them, 40,000 armed for battle, went over before the Lord to war to the city of Jericho. And that day, higher, higher magnified Joshua before all the people of Israel. And they feared him. And they did Moses, as they did Moses, as long as he lived. And that's who we call Yeshua. And we always were referencing Yeshua, the great Yeshua, the amazing Yeshua. We love Yeshua. Yes, we do. We care for our forefathers. Yeshua is one of the patriarchs who liberated us. He is a Messiah. But we do not worship him. We worship the Creator only. And the Lord spoke. To Joshua saying charge the priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the testimony of high high to go up out of Jordan and Joshua charged the priest saying go up out of Jordan and it came to pass when the priests who bore the ark of the covenant of the Lord higher higher were gone up out of Jordan and set their feet upon land that the water of Jordan returned impetuously to its place and went as before over all its banks so as soon as they got out the water the water came back and there's so so much water that as it was in that time of the year and it flowed over the banks so it's just back to normal like nothing ever happened chapter 4 verse 19 and the people went up out of Jordan on the tenth day of the first month, and the children of Israel encamped in Galgala, in the region eastward from Jericho. And Joshua set these twelve stones which he took out of Jordan in Galgala. So if you if you follow if you go in the west coast of America and you follow that river, that river Jordan, anywhere along that river So if you in, so anywhere at Jericho, in the Jericho area, in uh, Utah, that region near the Jordan River, eastward of that Jericho region, will probably have some stones like this. So if anybody wants to research, you might guess. When your sons ask you, saying, what are these stones, tells your sons that Israel went over this Jordan on dry land. And high, high, our God 
had dried up the water of Jordan from before them, until they had passed over as the Lord our God did to the Red Sea, which higher, higher our God dried up from before us, until we passed over, that all the nations of the earth might know. So here we go. We got another instance where the water dried up, right? Right? Also in the Mahabharati, Mahabharata in India, they have the Yad, Yadhaya, the Yadava people, the Yadhaya, who were just like the Hebrews. And they went to India and they had, they write all about it. And they did the same thing. They crossed over a river and then they did something to the river and ended up defeating the Indians. They write about these people on their exodus. <laughs> check it out, bro. Check it out. Yaudava, Yaudhaya, Y A U D H E Y A. That's the people. Yaudhaya. That all the nations of the earth might know that the power of Haya Haya is mighty, and that ye might worship Haya Haya our God in every work. It came to pass when the kings of the Amorites who were beyond Jordan heard, and the kings of Phoenicia by the sea, that the Lord Haya Haya dried up the river of Jordan from before the children of Israel, when they passed over, that their hearts failed. And they were terror stricken, and there was no sense in them because of the children of Israel. Chapter 5, verse 2. And about this time the Lord said to Joshua, Make these stones knives of sharp stone, and sit down and circumcise the children of Israel the second time. And Joshua made sharp knives of stone and circumcised the children of Israel at Placo called the Hills of Foreskin. So somewhere in the west coast of America, there's a place called the Hills of Foreskins anciently. So if there's something similar to that, that'd be interesting to investigate. And this is and this is the way in which Joshua purified the children of Israel, as many as were born in that in the way, and as many as were circumcised of them that came out of Egypt. All these Joshua circumcised. For forty and two years Israel wandered in the wilderness of Mabdaris. Wherefore most of the fighting men that came out of the land of Egypt were uncircumcised. So at that time, they weren't following the laws and everything. They still was uncircumcised. So right now they was, they was going into the wilderness, cleaning up. And now they're trying to follow the, the laws and commandments like we do today. How we're trying to go back and find into this programming that has happened and we getting rid of all this trash that we had, that had attached to us. Or it's uncircumcised, disobeyed the commandments of God concerning whom also he determined that they should not see the land which the Lord swore to give their fathers. Wait, wait. And this is the way in which Joshua befriended them. All these Joshua circumcised for 40 and two years, Israel wandered the wilderness among the wrist. But for more, most of the fighting men that came out of the land of Egypt were uncircumcised, who disobeyed the commands of Haya Haya, concerning whom also he determined that they should not see the land which the Lord swore to give their fathers even a land flowing with milk and honey. That's a miracle. And in their place, that's why they always say, oh, the promised land, the prom we're in the promised land. That's why the pilgrims are called pilgrims, because they're on a pilgrimage to the holy lands, miracles. And in their place, he raised up their sons, whom Joshua circumcised, because they were uncircumcised, having been born by the way and when they had been circumcised, they rested, continuing there in the camp till they were healed. And the Lord said to Joshua the son of Nile, On this day I have removed the reproach of Egypt from you. He called the name of the place Galgala. 
the children of Israel kept the Passover on the 14th day of the month at evening to the westward of Jericho on the opposite side of the Jordan on the plain. And they ate the grain of the earth unleavened and new corn. And this day the manna failed, and they had eaten of the corn of the land, and the children of no longer had manna. And they took the fruits of the land of the Phoenicians in that year. And it came to pass, when Joshua was in Jericho, that he looked up with his eyes and saw a man standing before him. There was a drawn sword in his hand. And Joshua drew near and said to him, Art thou for us or on the side of our enemies? And he said to him, I am now come, the chief captain of the host of High High. And Joshua fell on his face upon the earth and said to him, High High, what is commanded thou servant? And the captain of the Lord's host said to Joshua, Use thy shoe off thy feet, for the place where thou now standest is holy. <laughs> now Jericho was closely shut up and besieged, and none went out of it, and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, Behold, I deliver Jericho into thy power, and its king in it, and its mighty men. And do thou set the men of war round about it? And it shall be that when ye shall sound with the trumpet, all the people shall shout together. And when they hear, when they have shouted, the walls of the city shall fall on themselves. And the people shall enter, each one rushing direct into the city. And Joshua the son of Nahu went in the priest, into the priest and spoke to them, saying, Charge ye the people to go around and encompass the city. Let your men of war pass on arm before thy Lord high high. Chapter 6, verse 7. And let seven priests, having seven sacred trumpets, proceed thus before the Lord, and let them proceed, and let them. Sound loudly, and let the ark of the covenant of the Lord higher, higher follow, and let the men of war proceed before, and the priests bring up the rear behind the ark of the covenant of the Lord, proceed sounding the trumpets. And Joshua commanded the people, saying, Cry not out, nor let anyone hear your voice, until he himself declare to you the time to cry out. And then ye shall cry out, and the ark of the covenant of God, having gone round immediately, returning to the camp of laws there. Chapter 6, verse 12. Done.